Hi everyone, this is uh, another tutorial on how to stream richer body data into Motion Builder uh, straight from Motive in real time. Now, Motion Builder is particularly useful for previs and also retargeting and post animation cleanup. Um, so, let's just dive into it. I'm just going to fire up Motive here, as you can see on the bottom right window. Um, we have a rich body in the scene uh, moving around. Here we go. Um, and also, we have a couple of streaming settings which we need to pay attention to when streaming richer body data. So um, in order to stream the information, we need to enable broadcast data. Um, and currently my local in local interface is set to loopback because I'm streaming, streaming everything locally. If you had a separate machine running Motion Builder as your host, then you would set your IP addresses, um, preferably create a mesh network so you don't have any interference from external sources, devices, etc. Uh, now we also have a couple of settings here, labeling, labeled markers, unlabeled markers, asset markers, which are policy skeletons. This is the different types of uh, elements which we can stream into um, Motion Builder. Currently we only want to stream rigid body, so we'll only label that tick box. And bearing in mind, the more um, settings you enable, the more data we are sending to Motion Builder. So if we had hundreds of rigid bodies and you had all these parameters enabled, um, then you would have an overload of data. So be careful with a couple of these settings when streaming information. Uh, preferably create a mesh network and have a separate computer running the streaming data. Um, so furthermore, skeletal coordinate systems, we are not, not interested, same as bone naming conventions. Um, our access information is quite important because in motive is Y up, so same is in motion bullet. Um, so we're not concerned about that. We leave it at default and transmission type we set to multicast. Um, so right here in mo uh, motive we have our, said our rigid body, uh, which is defined by its given ID, which is number one. Uh, now in game engines we are we have to consider that um, ID information, but in motion builder we're only streaming the mark position and not necessarily the the pivot point, the center point, which is defined here in the viewport. So just diving into motion builder, if you're familiar with it. Um, once you install the plugin, you, uh, you you can go to devices and you're prompted with um, three OptiTrack uh, devices. We're interested in the Opti OptiTrack optical device, and there's also an optical skeleton for skeleton information. So we drag and drop that in the scene. Um, by default, it's going to zero it out, and it's going to appear here in our window. So here we have a couple of settings which we can play with to in order to um, send and receive the information from from Motion Builder to Motive or Motive to Motion Builder. Um, so first things first, we have to click um, on, uh, make sure you have your local address settings correct, your multicast, uh, etc. Um, again, if you're streaming to another machine, you have your local address as that machine and then your server address is your Motive. So currently, um, we're not getting any optical device here because we're not connected. So once I click online, you should get a nice little uh, green or yellow indication and we're prompted with some um, error messages here saying that we are connected to OptiTrack. Um, straight away we can select our rigid body here, so optical mark set. If you have a number of rigid bodies you can select all of them. Uh, we only have one currently so we'll just stream the one. And once it's live, uh, once it's online and live is clicked, we can then click generate uh, a new optical model. Once we click that, it's going to populate our rigid body into the scene. So I can zoom into that model. And right here we've got our five markers which we're streaming. As I said, we're not streaming the center point, we're only streaming the marker information. So um, there we go. If I move this around now in Motive and, mo and Motion Builder, you can see it adjust real time. If I hide a marker, you see it stop tracking. Um, so it's pretty, pretty decent. Um, obviously in our current given setup, I have a bit of lighting concerns, so um, it's not as accurate as I would hope for. Uh, but it will do just for now. So what happens if I want to attach um, an object to this um, optical data? How do we do that? Um, in Elements, in Motion Builder, we have a couple of objects. We have a cube. Uh, but first of all, uh, I'll just try and drop one of those in the scene and zero it out. So quite different to game engines, we can't just parent it to our rigid point information because it's not we're not streaming the local center point. So we have to kind of do some alignment here in order to get that um, model into position. 
So uh, Motion Builder, as good as it is with mocap data, it has predefined constraints. So it has a rigid body constraint, which we can use to redefine our rigid body in Motion Builder, which is quite handy. So I just drag and drop one of those into the scene. By default, it places it and zero, zero, zero. Um, and what this prompts you to do is ask you for a constraint object and a source object. So currently, our constraint object will be the cube and our source object will be the markers. Now you can add more than one source and which will populate as you add them. So if I expand my scene assets here, I have my optical models. I'll make this slightly bigger. So you can see I have five markers here. Now if I hold Alt and drag markers into source, they will populate as source one, marker one, and I'll do the same for marker two, marker three, marker four, and marker five again. It's the less marks you have, the more marks you have, the more you have to populate, less you have to populate. Um, and right now, my cube is my constraint object, so I want to constrain my cube to those markers basically. So I need to drag with Alt and drop the cube in here, and which it registers it. Um, and then what I can do is hit zero and snap, which will lock it into position. So now it's given it a, um, an average center point, which Similarly, what Motive does gives it an average location of its center point, pivot point per se. So now if I pick up this object and move it around, it's moving relative to that pivot point. So you can go, oh, I'm losing your tracking there, forward, back, up, down, left, and right. Now essentially, I can do the same thing with any given asset. Um, if you're streaming um, a gun in Motion Builder or um, tools or etc., um, you can, or even sports, um, you can parent those objects to the optical markers. Um, especially for previs, it's quite useful because all I need to do is select, have my VCS, apply some markers on top of it, and move it in our virtual space, and it will drive our environment. So just to demonstrate that quickly, if I remove my cube from the scene, which will remove it from the constraint object, and I'll try and find... Uh, camera and elements apply camera um, so now if I go back into our rigid body and apply our camera to our constraint object and zero that out now if I jump which you can see here if I move it around so we're only getting the translation information now we have to do some tweaks for rotational but I can also jump into the perspective view jump to my camera view and now, if I move my marker around, you can see the camera move forward and back. So you can then play around with some translational offsets and rotational offsets. Um, so there you go. Pretty straightforward way of getting a rich body straight into Motion Builder. Thanks for watching.